Hi guys, Mr. Jaeger here, and welcome, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 with the Old World Blues. Yes, I am back, and I'm with new equipment. So a quick heads up before we start, I am rolling with a new microphone, the Tonal 777. Um, this is even on a microphone stand. Yes, that's right, I'm getting more professional. Um, only took me a few years. And uh, this is the first series that I'll be recording with it, so there may be some occasions, you know, there may be some issues uh, in terms of audio, I might be louder, I might be quieter in some episodes, so I do apologize in advance, and hopefully we can get through, <clears throat> hopefully we can get through without too many issues. Um, but yeah, so I've got a pop filter and everything, so I should sound a little bit more clear. And there we go. So, speaking of polish and clearing, holy shit, this menu and the text, and the thing, and the holy Christ. This is extremely awesome. Like, seriously, what the hell? Oh my god, I am loving this. This is just incredible. So, yeah, I'm. the more I look at this, the more my brain is going, you're going to have to do a Hearts of Iron Old World Blues NCR playthrough one day. And I'm like, yeah, you're right, I will need to do that. At some point. Like, I can see the goddamn bear flag on the horizon just ever so slightly coming towards me. And there's me with my old world blues, brotherhood, brotherhood of Steel, like, Ad Victorium, Ad Victorium, Ad Victorium! <laughs> One day. Anyway, so today we're not going to be playing the NCR, though. Today we're going to be playing a sub mod, which I've linked down below in the description if you want to check it out. Which is the Eagle Rock. You can access them by going to the Utah section in the faction playthrough list. I mean, I'm just loving just how much stuff there is. I'm going to stop gorge gushing and spaffing all over. Because this is just... I'm going to be forever. So this is Eagle Rock. A very well polished mod. Which I recommend you guys play. It's a, I had a little bit of a, pre, a test play earlier. Just to sort of see, to see how good it was. And sort of get a vibe for it. I actually quite enjoyed it. So I thought we'd share this opportunity. And share this mod because it deserves the public attention. So, what exactly is Eagle Rock? Well, as by the brief history, uh, reading by the brief, uh, reading the brief history, as the airships of Eagle Rock's first aerial merchant fleet near the com their completion, a threat looms on the not too distant future south. S having or having been relatively sheltered from the conflict since their inception, the people of Eagle Rock look towards their future with uncertainty. Will they continue to entrust their survival with the Eagle Rock Town Council, or will they look towards a new militaristic leader to defeat their foes and perhaps even reclaim their homeland? So basically, the story of these guys is that they're actually a bunch of pilots and, you know, families of the pilots in, in pre-war America, and because of the bombs going off, uh, they basically... They've somehow, through the grace of the Golden Throne, have been blessed by not being killed by atomic radiation and fire, and have survived making a made a living by being a merchant group. And so now, however, as the world is beginning to take into another kind of uh, hell in the form of Caesar's Legion and uh, even worse, the NCR. Um, <laughs> triggered so many fucking fans <laughs> i could i could feel the hatred being sent towards it rush to this jesus <laughs> anyway so eagle rock is situated uh, just a little bit in this more or less slap bang in the center of the map and as you can see you've got a number of uh, well you've got you're not in a bad location because um you're not surrounded by you know the, the factions around you aren't too bad um you do have cover from the east, uh, south or northeast to the southeast in the form of the river. You do have like three crossings, and to your north and south, you've got areas you can easily set up defenses. So it's not too bad, but you know you are surrounded, and you do need you could easily be swallowed up if you're not careful. So just to showcase the thing, we're gonna kind of have a fairly dry run, no changes. I normally would like to have uh, the AI, well, to have access to the technologic side of things. Um, but I'm actually going to kind of just chill with that. So uh, I'm going to just chill with this. A standard technology system as before. So anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Okay. 
feel free to, by the way, to hit the comment section as well about my microphone. If it's too loud, it's too quiet. If you like what I'm doing as well, feel free to also hit the comment section down below. Uh, like the video, dislike the video. I have the dislike button thing on. I'm hoping that that's enough. If not, I highly recommend you get the dislike uh, bar extension from your Chrome or whatever because, you know, sod YouTube for trying to do this to us. So anyway... Um, another little announcement. I'm not running with the uh, German March collection radio today. I know. God, what the hell am I? So, we actually get a pretty decent head start. I say head start. Uh, a decent start when it comes to uh, this particular faction. Uh, the research tree, uh, which I fucking love because of the, uh, the, the animated textures. Uh, we actually get four research slots to start from, and if we go to the national focuses and go down to whereabouts is you here, we actually get a research slot already. So that's five research slots in this particular playthrough, which is going to be pretty useful for getting where we need to be in a decent hurry. Uh, but I'll go further in depth with the um, with the um, oh god, my brain's farted. Uh, the focus tree. So usual routine. Go to the industry, tool procurement, industry planning, uh, construction basis. Yeah, construction basis. I'm actually going to go full economy and engineering today. Normally, I would have. I normally like to have one thing being saved for the military, but I think because we're going to be going for a more trade-centric faction, I'm going to try and be a little bit more proactive about that. Um, in terms of building, uh, we get a decent sort of start. We have three infrastructure. Um, we have a level two airbase. Uh, eight slots have been taken up um, in terms of that. So, yeah, arms, three arms works for civilian workshop. We're going to add ourselves an additional um, military workshop because, you know, we need more guns. Um, and what I'm probably going to do is increase... Actually, no, that's going to take forever. Um, I think what I'll probably do instead is I will build a bunker here, a bunker here, and a bunker here. And we will build some outposts on the side, onto the north there. So that should keep us in the clear for now. The army is fairly ineffective. Uh, we're going to need to come up a new army. I do have the ability to come up a new commander. Strong, enduring... Intelligent. Oh, I had a nice roll today. Yes. And we can also... Well, when I get the command points, we can give him a nice little treat. Nice. Okay. So, what we're probably going to do is we're probably going to try and organize the militia units as best as we can. Uh, so, fall back line here. You two are there. Um, you and you. We're going to get a fall back line over here. And then you have you sort of defend this region right so that's going to be that's going to be them sorted perfect um okay that's perfect so now what we're going to do is we're going to head over to our focus tree now the focus tree for the eagle rock group is actually quite a nice little balance tree it's not ginormous so you probably could get it done in a number of hours um and it kind of consists of uh three to four fairly big um yeah, it's like three to four barely big sort of expansion trees. The option in the middle, options for the middle are basically which um, government do you go with? Do you go with the council, which are the kind of things that we've been going with, so we can become lobbying and profit first, which allows you to get more caps, war profiteering off maps, um, uh, powerful contracts. And that sort of thing as we sort of eek going towards that. Or do we go with uh, the People's Council, which is actually what I'm going to go with for this particular playthrough. So we're going to be more of a democratic sort of group. And we're going to try and get wealth for all. We're going to try and add some immigration, uh, free pre free trade, uh, standardization, uh, sorry, uh, foreign industry, clearing the rubble, public infrastructure. And then that sort of thing. Though, to be fair, I think the martial option will probably be very, very, very awesome. Because we get militarism, we get caps, we get disband the council, vicious drills, military youth. It gets more aggressive and you get more options. And eventually we get the ultimate empire. Uh, which kind of sounds awesome. Considering how much power in the, is in that particular thing. But 
we'll, we'll save that for another time. You know, if you guys want another playthrough of this particular thing, uh, then let me know and we can have a crack. So to the left, we'll start with the left, um, we get the ability to start up our merchant fleet and we get to use these focus trees to open up different uh, trading tabs, which we'll get to in the, uh, to the decision section. And basically, once we've done the merchant fleet, we can actually start planning a city, which allows us the ability to get the higher education. So I'm going to try and focus in on that. And then also we're trying to see if we can get some electronics and sophisticated schematics and oh baby <laughs> uh, hello there <laughs> water chip <laughs> i've been actually recently re-watching uh, the oxhorn uh playthrough of fallout 1 and 2 that that is actually pretty cool um, anyway, so without further ado, let us get started. There's actually a nice little balance as well. Not all of the focus trees are like at freaking 60 days, which is nice. So going further into the decision tree, oh, we need to actually get the thing. So never mind. We will get to it when we get to it. So without further ado. <laughs> so let's see if we can get this going. Yes, I got heartache by the numbers. Love. Hello. Every day you love me less than I love more. Uh, tutorial. Uh, I've already played 4.0. Thank you. Right. So we need we need to form a create. We need to create an agency. Okay. Uh, sneaky bastards. Yes. I can care. Uh, and <laughs> what? I'm gonna put stop. Um. Uh, no, uh, I think if we're going to have the stop option, I think it will be, um, oh, what is it? What's the most irritating thing for a pilot to have to do with, um, uh, what's the most irritating thing to have to deal with as a pilot? Um, oh, yeah. Um, there we go. Rules of Engagement Club. Um... Right, let's just turn the music down a bit. Yes, yeah, so the Old World Blues dev team have been getting pretty sick uh, when it comes to their musical choices. We should also have old. We should also have um, some Fallout 2 music. Well, Fallout music in the background. So, <clears throat> a legacy of aviation. Eagle Rock. Eagle Rock was founded after the Great War by the members of the United States Air Force, who were stationed in the numerous air bases in the Colorado. Although Denver and the surrounding cities did suffer from the nuclear bombardment, the Rocky Mountains served as a natural barrier to such destruction. The USAF remnants tried to return to the city after the nuclear fallout had been cleared. However, scavengers, most notably the Hang Dogs, forced them out of the city. This led to the survivor, survivors traveling west, building a community in the relatively protected town of Eagle Rock. As fate would have it, the town would, inha would have intact airfield, airfields that would later be used and used and maintained by the remnants. Aviation runs in our blood. Nice. We get a nice little trait to start the day off. Perfect. So now we get to go to the next thing. So we need to try and get over to the hang dogs. We, we, we took a long time. Yeah, so Dog City. That's the city that we probably should try and reclaim for this particular playthrough. So we'll try and see if we can survive and uh, win the day for that one. But really, we don't forget, we got to try and ensure that we actually survive. Oh, shit. <clears throat> When the USAF remnants arrived in Eagle Rock, the town wasn't entirely uninhabited. They were confronted by a group of settlers who were initially hostile towards them, but upon learning that they weren't raiders, allowed them to stay. Inspired by the Free State a Succession movement before the Great War, Great War, this group made extensive preparations of canned food and arms, leading to them being able to survive the nuclear winter and subsequent raiders. Despite the anti-U.S. government sentiment, the residents of Eagle Rock and the USAF remnants were able to come together with a common goal of survival in mind. They were even able to restore a sem some semblance of democracy through Eagle Rock Town Council. In these early years, what did the community focus most of their efforts on? We can actually either um, we can actually give ourselves an additional civilian workshop, or we can uh, rebuild the town's infrastructure. So. I lean towards um, a civilian workshop because I find that that's far more effective um, than the infrastructure, however nice that may be. Um, and finally, airship primacy. Let's see what we can do with that. 
Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay, we got some stuff. We got 10k in that. Oh, yeah, there's already a war going on. As always, there's a fucking war. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> When the residents of Eagle Rock began to construct aircraft of their own, they made the decision to prioritize the creation of blimps rather than conventional fixed-wing aircraft. They figured that the Wasteland's ruined infrastructure wouldn't be able to support the fixed-wing aircraft due to them requiring large, flat runways. Additionally, airships were highly versatile and useful when their numbers were limited. They would be able to transport goods long, long distances, conduct aerial reconnaissance, and even be used offensively. Constructing blimps, however, was a very resource and research intensive process. How much emphasis did we place on construction, on such construction projects? So we can actually choose to have um, a bit of a, an option to slightly gimp us for a, a slight benefit, or gimp us a fair amount, because obviously we lose not only 5% construction speed, but also minus 15% for, re uh, for um, research speed. However, we do gain 24 units of combat blimps in the stockpile. I will go with a great deal because obviously we then have the ability to use these things as and when we, you know, pretty much all over the place. So, um, but we haven't really, option. we haven't really done much with them for now, but we'll try and see if we can get them sorted in that, that particular mindset. So, now we have to decide our future, because I think don't think we get to do anything except our future. Yeah, so anyway, our future. And then, of course, we get to make the decision on what we do with our future. So, and obviously we know what our future is going to be. Bum -ba -da -bum -ba -da -bum -ba -da bum -ba bum ba Come on, come on. There we go. So... Despite the re its relative peace, not all has been fine and dandy in Eagle Rock these past few years. People have been having doubts in regards to Eagle Rock Council. It seems that to them that the people haven't been properly represented as one as of late and are calling for more democratic process of appointing a council member. There is also a size amount of sizable amount of people. Oh, hello. We got the thing. Uh, so it's not about of people calling for the dissolution of the council altogether and replace it with a more effective leader. This effective leader appears to be the warmonger with a cult of personality hell-bent on reclaiming Colorado. Ultimately, it was decided that the council would always remain in the hands of the people, which is what we're going to go for. The business of the capital would pave the way to the future, which means that we uh, would have the elite's council, or we would reclaim Colorado. Well, this time we'll be going with the people's council because we want democracy. So what we're going to have is the People's Council. Welcome, one and all. Uh, legal resources. Oh, yes. You bet your ass I'll be getting one of those. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to prioritize a setting up a decent economy. Now, I know I realize my position is not exactly decent. Uh, we will try and position ourselves uh, to try and remove that sort of thing. Um, I think what we'll probably do is instead... Probably what we're going to do is we're probably going to grab this and get these two, maybe even these two. Um, where is it? It's a particular thing. Oh, there it is. Yes. So, yeah, we're going to do this, get a couple of these going. And then we're going to try and see, we get this, maybe, and allow ourselves some more military things or that. And then proceed further down to try and get ourselves some better resources. Uh, because, obviously, the big thing right now is we need to establish ourselves in the wasteland uh, as a foe to be reckoned with, but more importantly, a foe to be traded with. And then we get, at least, you know, get the benefit of some cash. So, three days and the agency will form. Then I can get myself some defense in my lovely place. Rules of Engagement Club, yes. <laughs> right, so we've got three things being made. We'll have an additional factory being made. The next thing we'll be doing is once all of these things are being researched, um, I'm probably going to spend a bit of time uh, with one of them being the MG section, because I do like the MG section. Getting the MG is going to be super useful for what we're going to have, is which is more of a defensive force. Kind of going to try and see if we can make an airborne detachment. 
not entirely sure if we can paratroop them. Last time I attempted to do paratrooping was uh, some years uh, some years ago, and more importantly, um, the game crashed when we did it. So I'm hoping it doesn't. Co um, we don't follow suit. So ideally what I want to be in a position is I want to have this area more or less locked down and secure and then if anything should happen like uh, Caesar's Legion attempts to do something, the NCR attempts to do something, both of which I'm confident will try, uh, or we have to deal with some tribal faction to the side, then yeah. Uh, right, review the military. Because what we're going to try and do is get review the military, then go down to hiring mercenaries, and then get a standing army. Luckily, after this, there's a very small amount of stuff we have to worry about. And then we need to militarize the blimps, which then gives us adept designs. We need to get this done because a little uh, a slight um, warning for those who've not played before. You need to get the militarized blimps... Um, arm and armor gondolas, adept designs, and air assault ships. Because the moment you start going over to here, where we can start opening up trade options with the particular sections of the wasteland, we then start encountering pirates. And uh, there's a focus tree we need to do in order to prevent that from actually fucking us over. And it is quite a big debuff. Um, so we will need to get ready for that. So, that's slowly going through. Hopefully once we get the training set up. Uh, reviewing the military. Fantastic. I've never had so many focuses go through so quickly. We actually get the ability to hire mercenaries uh, with this one as well, which is pleasant. Infiltration risk. A smooth talker. I want to go with Edward French. Edward French, you are my man of the hour. Um, deep minds, I need you to infiltrate and send a message to these dudes because these wankers are trying to bully me into doing whatever. Actually, we've not had them talk to us yet. Maybe. So, policies. What should we have as a policy? The person of the community. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that because then we can get some good stuff. We have officer modify, officer call, modify government. And then if we can adjust as needed, that'll be pretty go. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Um, law. We have lots of things. Perfect. Okay, first of all, MG. Second thing. Um, let me see. Uh, workers needed. Improvised tools. Uh, we need resource gain efficiency so we can get that sorted. Right, so that's going to be that being researched. Fantastic. So next we need a standing army, and then once we've done that, we'll go down into this particular thing and be like, whoop, and be like, boom. The cool thing also is we actually get to choose with our particular special groups whether we go special forces, which is kind of nice, um, or we get power armor, which <laughs> uh, I would like very much. Oh, that's my phone. Thank you very much for making a loud noise. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hopefully it wasn't too loud. Actually, to be fair, this will be a good test. This series is uh, hopefully going to be a good thing. Hello, standing army. Right, my army isn't shit anymore. Yeah. Um, so now let's militarize our blimps. We also gain a decent amount of EXP for my air sparing. Motherfucker! Anyway. Okay, well, we'll have to deal with that in a second. Restarting the mines. Hybrid designs. What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? Mediocre army. Emerging army, which gives us... Uh, our army is... Emerging army. Ah! Okay. How how long? How, how long? Okay. This is not good. Um, we do need some stability and some economy. Uh, air merchant things. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll do that first. Let's get the let's get the let's get the aerial fleet set up so we can actually get some things. Because then we can actually get the tra then we can actually get the um, the focus tree uh, for. Oh, okay. Um, free folk. Setting up branching. Ah, cool. Establishing branch offices and trade route nodes throughout the wasteland is vital for the prosperity of Eagle Rock. They will allow our airships merchants to buy to better buy and sell items and the resources for Eagle Rock. Each 
branch office that is set up will provide us with an additional 10k passive bottle caps income, as well as unlocking certain focuses. Branch offices can either be set up on map through decisions, or the scripted GUI in the decisions tab. So basically it's just like a small little tutorial to teach you on or saying where the hell are the free folk? It must be somewhere. Uh some some somewhere. Oh look for Sang and Free Folk. Okay. Oh Navarro. So these are the free folk. Well they're at war and they're about to get their asses potentially canned or not potentially canned, depending on how things go. Right, so now that we have this we're going to need to expand our moorings, which actually then adds an additional level 3 airbase. Or should I develop... Um, I think I'll get an arms workshop set up. Because what I'm going to try and do in our production line... Because uh, all I have is three arms workshop with pipe guns and combat blips. And I don't really want to change too much of that. I mean, I might reduce the amount of weapons to one... But I'd like not to, if I'll be honest with you. Because <laughs> we're going to have to change our military divisions fairly quick, like. So, yeah. Yeah, not, you know. Oh, nice. Okay. Ooh. Just realized we now probably have enough to do something in the intelligence agency. Uh, I think we probably should focus on upgrading our defenses. I will, I, I probably should get a cryptology department set up. But right now, I think my defenses is kind of more important. We also need to spend the resources gathering intel and you know, doing whatever. And hopefully, once we get enough um, strength in our in you know in our economy, which you know would be a nice ten increase on every particular factor. Um, ah, yes. Speaking of which, this is the GUI that the guy, the game was talking about, and we can actually set up a bunch of different branch offices if I click on them. So first of all, let us set up a branch office right in our lovely little town. So we can actually get to see, we actually get to enjoy the benefits of all of this wonderful stuff. Um, say construction speed, infrastructure. Yeah, we'll go through for one declared war on Tron. Yeah. By the way, if you've never played the Hearts of Iron Four mod before, you will be bombarded by messages because there are so many factions in this mod. Um, that you will be seeing them go, come and go like a flash in the eye. Probably the first few years, you will just be like, <laughs> see, see what I mean? Um, <clears throat> Utah Trade Expedition Log. We are already acquainted with the town of New Canaan along the coast of the Great so Salt Lake in Utah. They have sent their Mormon missionaries and caravans to the surrounding towns, which does include this Eagle Rock. However, we're far enough away that they aren't able to influence our population too much. Nevertheless, they are good trade partners. They would be good trade partners with our improved access to them. However, there are rumors of a potential danger from a tribe called the White Legs to their south. I worry that the trade may be less profitable in the future if these rumors are true. Mm, dear. Bit of foreshadowing there. So, we have made the decision to establish that. And the next thing we need to do is... Actually, before we do that, because that's when we have problems. Um... Production line, I think we probably should go to expanded moorings, or should I go over to... No. Uh, probably we need to go to... Yeah, I think that probably is our best bet. I'd like to increase our thing, because the expanded moorings is probably the most or the least useful. So if we can get that one done and out of the way, we can then head over to the building slots and add an additional civilian workshop. Um, <clears throat> we're going to keep you in the reserve, Mr. New Factory, until we get the scientific tech. Nice. So once we get the scientific tech for the makeshift automatic squad weapon. Um, ah, good. We get that. Research advisor. Um, no, we need a cultural stuff first. Um, economic expert, trade lords, cost, construction. Mm, I think we'll probably need to get, um... Hmm, arms of obvious, homestead factor, fuel boy, conscript. I think we'll probably have a look-see. What's cultural advisor? Honest speaker, head physician, aircrew organizer, warmonger. Well, we'll get that guy in a minute. Um, I think what we'll probably do... Can I, can I adjust anything? Standard wages. I can have lifetime pensions, which is actually pretty useful. Standard wages are okay. That doesn't do anything. Family stipends is not too great. 
This will increase the amount of caps we have to pay for this particular thing. So probably I shouldn't change that just yet. Uh, economic advisor. Mm, I think we'll probably go with... Um, I think we'll go with Francis McCook. He seems like a pretty decent dude to work with right now. See what I mean? Alright, what's this? Factories. Yeah, we're fine on that. <clears throat> God, it's been a while since I've recorded. My voice vocal cords are already struggling. GG. Hopefully they're not going to seem too croaky. Right. Well, once we get Eagle Rocks expanded moorings going, we can start focusing on other things and then get the trading up. I just want to get this stuff set up and ready to go so we can get the ports of the Eagle Rock set up. Because that's an additional building slots and additional things. Yep, there we go. Yep. Uh, the loans of Atis Army is just... Uh, the Brotherhood, last violent camp has gone the way of Atis. Nice. Because <clears throat> if we can get the ports of Eagle Rock set up, then holy shit. Fantastic. We get any, uh, we got a trading note all set up and ready to go. Right. Um, he thinks the next thing should be woodworking. <laughs> and we're also going to need to improve our communications with the stuff. But right now, I think the tr workers needed option. Fantastic. That's there. So the next thing I think we're going to need is uh, more than two branches. Fuck a duck. Um, okay. So what we'll do instead is probably develop Western farmland. Um, get that stuff all sorted so we can get ourselves an additional work slot and also uh, more f um, an additional population as well. That's pretty dope. Um, that also might be a good idea to have all of the industries all set up and ready to go. We will need to head down into changing policy as well, which will give us a bit more political power. Um, we can also expand the influence, the covert business, give a repair. We could actually get radi radar repairs, which actually might be very useful. Standardization is probably also something that I definitely want to get, as well as some foreign industry and other jazz. So they're like, there are some genuine benefits towards uh, doing stuff like this. I'm just trying to be as, I suppose, efficient as possible, but not in an evil way. Or hopefully in not a boring way either, because that would suck. Anyway, so we'll see what we can do. Hopefully try and get this particular facet set up. We will probably need to, once we um, once we get ourselves more acquainted with... Oh, hello. Once we get ourselves some more uh, exper army experience, we'll probably will try and um, increase... Ah, oh, that's a point. How's my options going? Oh, I've done it already. How much pop caps do I have? 14k. Operators... Can I do anything? I need healing powder, interrogation techniques. Um, we can increase that chance. That'll be useful. It's just so we can stop the cap. We can try and reduce the option, you know, the options. Because while we may not have too much in the sense of a reason for people to have a go at us, good job. I'd like to be in a position where if we capture them, the fuckers won't have a chance. Um, which I'm pretty happy about. So we just need ports of Eagle Rock, which we'll have in a second. And this. Um, yes. Cool. So once we've done this one, I'm going to go for the second plot thing, which is going to probably cause some problems on my end, but that's fine. Uh, so we've been given an additional amount of bottle, bottle caps? Bottle caps. Um, bottle caps, which I'm going to be quite happy in using. I mean, we can use the bottle caps to, for example, recruit some dudes, get some weapons as well, because that'll be kind of cool. Some additional pop caps, uh, some and and then it's and can't fucking speak today. Uh, and nine service pistol pipe guns. GG. Uh, right, I think research advisor should come into it. So. You do get options with the research survivor, uh, research advisor. You can get a bunch of military theorists. You get an air experience theorist, which gives you air experience gain uh, 0 0.5 daily, uh, which would increase your amount of EXP from zero. Okay. Um, we get the option of choosing this one, which is air doctrine research, uh, land doctrine research speed 10%, air technology minus plus 10%, army experience gain 15. 
then this one, which is the same thing, but this time without the air technology edition. And this one, which is 10% towards conventional warfare research um, and 15% things. What we're going to do is we're going to go for this one so I can research air technology a little bit faster and just have a generic research for the land doctrine. The reason for this is because we're going to go in a particular direction. Um, we're going to go with refined warfare uh, rather than... Um, than conventional warfare. Conventional warfare is pretty good, but we're going for a more paratrooper focus centric unit. And I think refined warfare is probably where we need to be at for those sort of things. Also, I just noted uh, Capitol Hill has just fallen. Eh? Wait, the Capitol Hill, the Washington Brotherhood of Steel's Capitol Hill. The fuck? How? Okay. Okay, sure. You know, Brotherhood of Fucking Steel rejects. Power armor apparently doesn't mean shit to these people. Sure. <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. Uh, helium factory output. That would be fucking hilarious. For 180 days. Fuck it. I'll spend about eight, a few caps on that. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Product efficiency growth. There are some good reasons to spend caps today. Do, it. do I have more caps? How many caps do I have? Oh, goody, I'm okay. Um, I was about to say, like, fuck. If we... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just sort of slowly realizing. I'm like, ah, I may have made a mistake. <laughs> perfect, perfect, okay. 80s have developed the reviews. We are now minus. Oh, bugger. Uh, we might be in the slap poo poo. Uh, perfect. Right, you, we need to now head over to... Right, what we need to, first of all, is to get some Texan trade. Texan or Nevada? I think we should slowly, slowly go. So first, I think Arizona, maybe Nevada. I'm not too knowledgeable on American states, so I'm going to assume Nevada, as Arizona is closer than Nevada. Or it's around the same area as Nevada. Feel free to correct me in the comments section down below if you think, um, or if you know, I'm incorrect. Because uh, my geography is not great. It's not, it's not bad. Like, in terms of things like, um, I can understand a lot in Europe. America, kind of, like, I can recognize certain parts. Obviously, I know the east and west coast and all that jazz, and I'm aware, I'm aware of certain towns. Okay, so my research debuff is now gone, and we now have a shitload of air, airborne abilities, which is dope. And in about two days' time, just got a massive bulk. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ooh, nice. All of that at the same time. Wondrous. Right, okay. Um, what's this? Shipping infrastructure. Ooh. No, we'll, we'll, we will not do that. Uh, Methinks we should try this to get myself some political power. But next, we need to go down into... Uh, oh, Nevada is actually... Oh, Nevada and Arizona were closer together. Okay, I'll go Colorado instead get some trade with them so he can be like, hey guys, how you doing? I'm totally friendly, don't shoot me. And then I'm like, fuck you! Ha <laughs> ha! Shoot behind, shoot the people in the back. It's safer. Right, so vehicles, air we need to think about air support at some point, because airplanes, because airplanes. Uh, me thinks we should go with... Um, I do want to get airplane support, but obviously I think the combat blimps might be in thing. Actually, to be fair, we probably also should think about refined warfare so we can have um, slightly... Uh, mm, actually, no, we should probably think about um, healing powder because that helps us with our interrogation techniques, which is also kind of nice. Uh, how's our money doing? Not good. We're broke, but we're not... But we're not in any particular danger. More importantly, we can now finally establish one of these babies. I'll need to get, once I get my next military factory going, uh, which hopefully will be done in a moment, I will increase this to two. Uh, two. There we go. So two military factories will hopefully give us additional uh, construction speed for those machine guns. More importantly, then, we need to get ourselves some support equipment being made. So that way, then we can get ourselves um, in a stronger position to make more self-sufficient airborne units because right now we are very much crippled um, but if I can get airborne units in 
and get them to work around being more self-sustained, they should be able to, to outlast most things. And I do favor the power up the power armored units. I know probably it's a bit boring because we all know that power armor units are somewhat better than special forces. I mean, special forces are they're still good, but I'd rather have a I'd have rather have a bunch of paladins with me than um, a bunch of the, uh, than the than the the, the rangers with me because I feel like the rangers while they would be extremely good in most open environments, the power suit um, probably would be um, I would say that they're more adaptable to most other scenarios. So anyway, Colorado trade expedition logs. This is most unfortunate. It seems like the scavengers that kicked out our ancestors out of Denver have only grown in strength. They now call Denver Dog City. A disgrace, to say the least. Regardless, trade with the hand dogs is still profitable due to the riches they find across the city. Acknowledged. And, ah, dear, we've got a little problem. Our airship merchant expeditions are, were going fairly well. However, we have heard multiple reports of our airships being shot at by raiders or being hijacked when landing to trade. We must address the issue as fast as possible, or else we will, it will persist and make our trade expeditions very unprofitable. Our engineers have already suggested arming our, warship, our airships and hiring mercenaries to protect them. So this is what we should immediately focus on. So this is the thing that I would uh, that I would warn you about from earlier. A ticking 60-day mission will continually remove manpower, stability, and war support unless the airship piracy comes to an end through completing a certain national focuses. Understood. And as you can see, um, it already puts us in a bit of a bad position. Minus 20 political power cost, or more political power cost, minus 40% caps income. Ow! And minus 10% stability. And that's just the tier 1 edition. If we ignore this for too long, we will find ourselves in a bit of a shitstorm. So, having realized we are in the said shitstorm, we now need to cast ourselves over to this area, the militarized blimp section. And as you can see, we will have to admit, we will have to have at least some of the. Um, some of these things, we can't actually quite finish off everything. So what we have to do to beat off this focus, uh, or to beat off this particular thing, is to, if we go to the Decisions tab and head to the top. Is it the top or is it down below? Uh, I know that it's somewhere. There is an option to deal with the piracy. Or it will give you suggestions for the piracy or how to do it. Ah, oh, there it is. So... Basically, all we need to do is we need to hire mercenaries, which we've already done, and we need to have the two focus trees, adapt designs, arm and armor the gondolas. Now, unfortunately, because we didn't have the pirate, pir you know, the pirates thing, we're going to have to admit that there's, we're going to have to accept the fact that we're going to have one tier one and tier two of the um, the piracy thing. But if we focus on getting this done as soon as humanly possible will be able to mitigate the issue and eventually resolve that. Hopefully, um, it won't be so bad because if, for example, we don't do it, we have a chance of four things will happen. We'll either have a 25% chance that manpower will go down by 50, a 25% chance of manpower going down by 100, minus one stability, minus one's uh, war support, a 25% chance of manpower going down by 200, stability and war support going down by 2% as well. So it's quite a big drain and can, if it left ignored, really fuck you over. So uh, let's avoid that. Let's avoid that and counter it, counteract it as soon as humanly possible. Uh, this is when I'm also thinking that we probably should go to the cultural advisor and begin to have a look. Uh, head physician, probably what I want to have because then we can increase the monthly population by a considerable amount. Um, I will eventually appoint military staff, but right now my military assassin city. <laughs> they got assassinated. Um, but yeah, so the hope is if we can get that sorted, we'll be able to fix this issue before it starts and nip it in the bud, which is what we definitely need to do, especially since there's a lot of shit in... Uh, let's, yeah, ooh, Robot City. Not... Oh, Robot City versus Maxon. Maxon chapter. Ad Victorian, brothers. Ad Victorium. Right, we were able to somehow deal with that, which is good. Um, 
we should also probably consider also increasing our trading depot by going to Nevada. And that will give us a decent amount of money. Though it might also make the, the pirates worse, but I've not gotten this far. I kind of stopped around here when I um, made the play. So uh, we're already further ahead um, in terms of stuff. Though I was a bit slower on the uptick because I was just admiring all of the different focuses and all of the different things. So, militarized blimps is here. The next thing we need to do um, is get... Uh, yeah, training blimps with adapt designs. Sweet. Also, we need to get ourselves... I think we should go to the um, major businesses. Uh, I think we probably want to have the greases fact... Oh, actually, no, we're not really doing anything with them at the moment. I think I'm going to go with um, lifetime pensions. No, no. Captain of industry, airship engineer... Probably should go down uh, civilian infrastructure, civilian factory construction speed. I mean, uh, I don't really know what we should go. I mean, outside volunteers, no undesirables, no training. We do need to improve the training, and I don't think we get that. But we also need to think about, uh, maybe we should probably think about military high command. Yeah, that probably would be a good idea. Caravan, kind mercenary, army experience game, and max planning. Defense on core and territory. I'm going to go with um, military again. Because we're now going to get like 16. Like, holy shit, this is going to be dope. Like, holy shit, it's going to be awesome. Six Naben. I'm going to. I really don't like this song. There we go. Oh, we got some new things. Perfect. Right. Uh, support equipment. Yes, perfect. spots. Uh, me thinks they got it wrong, because I don't think it was the ink spots that did this song. Unless this is another... Um, oh, maybe it's they got the wrong name for this, because there is, there is a song, but it's not the song that I was thinking. Right, we need to increase our combat language, so we're going to have to lean a little bit more into the military stuff, but we can hopefully try and get some civilian shit going through. I can't believe I'm saying this it's so intensely. I'm like, we need the civilian shit! And I'm like, nine times out of ten, I'm more like, get me to Daka Daka! <laughs> but yes. God, we're already 45 minutes, or 46 minutes into the recording. Holy shit! Uh, ba, 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 ba. That's doing all right. I mean, to be fair, once we get all these military, uh, these worst military, all these defensive positions all set up, we should be fairly gooch. Uh, we don't have any dockyards, mind. Should we make convoys? Might as well. Not that we can do much with said convoys, but you know what? Let's assume we can. Oh, there's uh, the old bones are gone now. Ah. Right, adapt designs are done. So now all we need to do is equip the armed and golden dollars, which, sadly, we couldn't quite avoid that particular problem. They're going to be done in 60 days. So now we've got... Yeah, we definitely need to fix this problem. Unfortunately, we're still going to actually have to... I don't think we get any particular benefits back from that, which fucking sucks. Um, right, let's do suicide pills. No, wait, 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 what? Did we not have the thing? Oh, we haven't even researched that. Okay. Well, what we'll do is we'll... Yes. We can get that shit set up. I'll also need to probably think about reorganizing my army units a bit, but I'll hold off for the time being. And actually, to be fair, the military template for the Eagle Rock infantry is actually pretty good. Like, we got a combat width of 16... And I have 200 on that particular thing. I ain't gonna complain. It, it's pretty good. Nice, we've got military things. Chief of Air Force. Probably should use this. Uh, fighter country. Mm -hmm. Honest speaker, war support. Air accident chance. Wasteland economy. If we can... Uh, we, need, we need to have a well-equipped army, but... We need to have, um, part of the government has the trait warmonger. God damn it. We're going to need to try and improve that a bit. 
And we don't have slavery, like the Emperor. Automatic. Um, economic autarky. Fair enough. Outside volunteers. I'm going to do something a bit weird. I mean, the compliance gain is fine and all, but I think I'm probably going to have no... Uh, actually, probably have a little bit of that. No mutants allowed. Good for to, to hear. Um, Mac Pants Caravan. Spymaster Reconnaissance. Methinks we should probably have that as our particular focus because obviously having that is going to be fairly important. Um, industry. Science and technology. Uh, yeah, we probably need to grab that next. God, thank God. We, we were, he was scaring me there for a second. I had to thought I was having to deal with more military tech. <laughs> Uh, New Vegas. Nevada Trade Expedition. Analog. As we approached Nevada during the night, we saw a, a spire of bright li of light and neon signs in the distance. As we drew nearer, we saw a bustling metropolis with mostly intact buildings and plenty of traders. Welcome to New Vegas, the Silver City, or the City of Sin, depending on who you ask. There are plenty of goods to be bought here, but the main attraction are the countless casinos uh, in the Vegas Strip. However, rest assured, I have limited the amount of caps the crew can waste to such a, such attractions. <laughs> yep. To be fair, you can't blame the guy. You cannot blame the guy. Healing powder, huzzah, which means now I can actually do this. Oh, once, once, once we're getting invisible ink sorted. And the resistor is also done. Fantastic. Right. We're going to need military ship on that. I will have to probably hop into uh, militia training, though, and then again, we also might need to get this. <coughs> oh, dear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, we are really behind the times when it comes to firearms. Um, and we still kind of need refined warfare. Fuck! We do need our own industry and also our abilities to do shit. Uh, the curse of having too much to decide. Okay, I'm gonna go weird. I'm gonna get vacuum tubes next. Why? Because shit gets researched faster, and we can kind of prepare ourselves. I mean, we're we're definitely over half a year early, so probably not the best of ideas to go for it. But trust me, we get this half a year early research buff improved, and then we can really begin to make some things. So that is now done, and also we can kind of chill with that. Um. We can potentially get assault airships very early. And I am tempted. Let's have a look. Probably should adjust the audio a bit. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so, methinks we. So, if we went to research the airships. And I'm like, I want to have my assault airships. It's about five years ahead of time. So I can have about a year before I need to get this focus tree, which is what I'm thinking. And instead, we should probably get immigration and... Um, I think, yeah, standardization next. And down to... Hey! Our military... Our efforts to militarize our blimps and hire mercenaries to prevent our airships from being attacked have been successful. It seems the raiders don't stand a chance against our airships now. Which now removes the airship problem and regain our, about a base stability of back, back up to five from before. So it's not bad now. We're actually doing pretty solid work. Which is great to see because now, of course... We don't have to worry too much about things. We still do need to keep our eyes peeled on the surrounding environments because obviously all of this economy means jack shit if we can't defend it. So uh, I will need to at some point really start looking into my military stuff. But we're, we're focusing a little bit here and there. It's not quite as... Um, it's not quite going 100% military, but it's not quite going 100% uh, um, civvy either, which is fair enough. Once this uh, operations thing has been done also, uh, we can begin to really look into our stuff. So, but yeah, I'm not going to lie. I am really loving um, this uh, the, the level of refinement in this particular mod. The soundtrack's getting better. The the mechanics are getting more diverse. There's more uh, there's more things happening. It really is at just at a wonderful stage now, and I'm honest to God, super happy to be able to play this again. Um, and it feels great. It feels new. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, yeah, there's a little mod I got which basically celebrates what you've done. Things like this. 34 countries at war. 7 factories. 5 military factories. 1 naval dockyards. 5 divisions in the field. 24 deployed planes. And a 0 naval, thi uh, naval ships. And uh, I can also give um, switch to relative numbers. Uh, 29 countries at war. So there we go. Uh, be sure to take breaks. Hey, yep. Well, that's fine. We will... We will do that. So, yes, a year has gone in the game, and things are happening. It's a nice little mod, actually, that kind of reminds you as to what the hell's going on in the world, which is pretty cool. We have, like, five minutes left before we wrap up, because you guys know me. I play this game. I play these uh, these particular sessions for an hour. You guys get the full you get the full treatment, which I hope you appreciate. Not always will I go with the hour playthroughs on um, certain series. I might try and go for something slightly different. Um, all right, combat language... I'm probably going to need to do smoke signs. Yep. I kind of... I'm, I dropped the ball a bit with this one. So I'm going to try and see if I can play catch up. And then eventually we can get some... Uh, Raid of Crystals. Annex as well. Fair enough. How much caps do I have? Oh, nice. I think we can do this. Uh, right. Industrial machinery. Production growth. Amenities. Not too fussed about that. But I will take this option for textbooks. And I will take options for. Oh, I've already have I already overdone it. I may have already overdone it. Um, yes, yes, I have. Right, we aren't training any new divisions at this moment. I do, however, have some army experience stuff, so I probably should start getting ready to train my infantry. Like a duplicate. Uh. uh um, uh, yeah, just, we'll have them as Eagle Rock Infantry, but we'll change the icon to, because hmm. obviously we want to make them special, I'll put them, these are the bog, uh, to be fair, these will be kind of the bog standard dudes, I'm going to equip, so these guys, we're going to change up a bit, um, we're going to turn them into fire teams, and have them, uh, have the same amount of stuff, combat with a 16, uh, but instead, we're going to have a fire team option and a chems option, which is about that. And I'm going to add an additional fire team onto that, so it'll give us a combat width of 18. Uh, six dudes, six of these things. Hopefully, that'll go to that. I might add an additional. Oh, nice! I can add an additional thing and get a combat width of 20 um, with that. In fact, you know what? I might change that to. Uh, oh no! We actually need to get that. Okay. So, hmm, one, two, three. I'm going to change you to an MG. And we're going to have to just, there we go. Sadly, there's no tags for this particular thing, so we're just going to have to roll with that. So we're going to have basically a new unit of uh, Spec Ops dudes. And basically, these guys are going to try and be, like, we're going to have bog standard infantry and the other jazz, but we're going to try and primarily have them... Uh, be focused with the air support. I will eventually go into ground forces, but at the at the moment we're just going to try and see if we can get um, air force power in that particular market, and then we can start really doing stuff. And the next thing I've just hit on is uh, energy refueling standards because we not only get a fuel increase um, and fuel capacity, but we get an additional amount of power, which we will need because our air force is going to need it. Um, and then afterwards we're going to start increasing the amount of infrastructure inside this particular area. And that is a lot of dudes. That is a lot of people fighting. No wonder my frames died. Where the fuck are they? How many more are those? Oh, bugger nation. Oh, bugger. Yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of people fighting. Well, guess what? We, <laughs> we all thought it was about one war, and now it's not. Jesus Christ. Oh, boy. Okay, so um, you're a little bit ahead of the ball. Uh, right, let's go to the military shit, because I think we're going to need to talk about this at some point. Uh, potato PA. Cause, so, like 61 days, that will do us fine. We're going to need to take horses. Oh, we can actually have horses as a technology. I kind of forgot about that. Uh, Vault 37. Okay. And Suicide Kings. Oh, sorry, Suicide Kings. <laughs> suicide Kings. How can you be so good at suicide? That's, that's... No. I'm not even going to try. Uh, right, commando training. That's good. That means our spies will be much less likely to get attacked and captured because of all of that. So we're almost at 1k in our population. And we're almost at a good point. I'm going to put infrastructure onto max. 
once we've got all the other shit set up. And the patrolman has been... Oh, the Bayou guys have beaten back the patrolman and actually won. Good shit. Um, that is pretty dope. Not gonna lie. Pretty impressive. Ouroboros have we beaten against the old bones. They may be a, th a threat in the future. Um, yes, they probably are a threat in the future, which is a bit of a problem. Right, economic advisor. Um, now we probably need to think about something else. Um, chief of army, justify wartime. No. Methinks yes now for the power armor. Yes, methinks yes for power armor. So that should be about fine for that. You've got the energy refueling standards. We're almost run out of time. I think we're going to try and see if we can get welcome one and all so we can get more manpower and increase our base stability. And my war support is almost in the gutter, which is not the most effective. But we do have all of the important shit. Uh, next, I think we should go for the this. But unfortunately, that is it for our time. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this particular little playthrough. Uh, don't worry, I'll be continuing... Well, I hope you enjoyed the playthrough through this episode. If you like this kind of content, let me know in the comment section down below, clicking on the like button, and of course, subscribing to the channel. And let me know what you think about the current microphone setup. If you like this particular setup, if you think it's a bit too loud, it's a bit too weird, let me know. I'm still adjusting it, I'm still improving it, but it is at least uh, not on a tripod, which means unlike the Rode NT-USB, I won't be clubbing it every five seconds uh, when I attempt to move the microphone or attempt to move my hands whilst doing shit. So... I hope you guys have appreciated that, because uh, I'm I'm happy I don't have to worry about knocking my microphone over now, which is a very useful thing. And yes, I hope to see you in the next episode. I will catch you then. This is Mr. Yeager, signing out.